Eleanor Shepard is a published author, a social justice activist, a Salvation Army officer, mother, and wife. And in all of these roles, she has learned the art of listening. Today, she shares with us that in many cases, it is better to listen than to have all the answers, especially when sharing your faith. And being a good conversationalist starts with good listening. Thank you, Eleanor, for joining us today. I'm going to try to be a really good listener here in this interview. You, you can test me <laughs> after. Your uh, book is called More Questions Than Answers. And how, how is it more effective to listen? Because we think about communication. Obviously, it's two-way. You've got to listen and talk. But how is listening actually more effective? Well, I think people uh, really need to be heard before we can actually share with them the things that are important to us. Listening opens doors for people to actually hear, but it also, I think, helps us learn. We learn a great deal when we listen to other people, uh, particularly people who are not perhaps committed to our faith yet. We can learn a great deal from them about where they are, then when they ask questions, we can actually encourage them to find the answers for themselves. Not by offering answers, but by walking with them, being authentic about who we are, and allowing them to find their own answers. The other benefit of this is that we too can grow in our faith as we learn from the questions of other people. One of the stories that I include in the book is of a young Muslim man who came to faith in Christ through a college and careers Bible study group my husband and I led. Uh, he came with a lot of questions. Most of the other young people in that group were Christians, had grown up in the church. He asked questions they'd never thought of asking. And as he came to faith, as he, we studied the Bible together, he found some answers for his questions they also grew in their faith because they discovered there were answers for questions that they had never even thought of asking. Now you talk about how sometimes our uh, quick answers or prepackaged answers, maybe ones that we've, we've heard all of our lives, especially about faith types of issues, don't just cut it anymore. People don't want the cookie cutter answers. How can we relate to people better on that level? Well, I think we need to admit that we don't have answers. Uh, I guess one of the things that I have been faced with in my own personal life was uh, eight years ago, our son was in a car accident and became a quadriplegic. I was praying for him the whole time he was traveling. The accident happened. His life was spared, yes, but it's a very different life than he had before. And I had to learn that sometimes uh, there are, I don't know, why God allowed that to happen to our son. I know that I have learned a great deal about faith through the journey that we've followed since then. All of the family has, but it certainly was not as I imagined things should be. But what I've discovered is that people will say to me, uh, when they're going through difficult times and I'm trying to ask, where is God in this? They will say, you understand, don't you? because they know that I have had to deal with questions that do not have clear answers. And you talk about people wanting to be heard. And the number one thing that I hear, and even in my own life, is time. People don't have time. When I hear we have to stop, you talk about listening actually can't be rushed. We actually need time to actually listen to people and relate to them. How do we do that when we don't have time? <laughs> Sometimes it means picking up the phone, calling a friend, saying, how are you doing? I've got five minutes. Listen for five minutes. Just let them talk. And I think in terms of when I talk about uh, what I call spiritual accompaniment, which is the whole second section of the book, it's uh, scheduling time, making time in our schedule to be with people, even for short periods of time, and also honoring their schedule. So if they haven't got time to talk now or to have time when they want to talk and, and, and you want to be available to listen, you can say, I know it's a busy day for you. How about we arrange to meet and arrange a time and a place where you can meet? Um, often it's over coffee, things like that. Things that we do make time for, especially if they're important to us. Right, and we all have that extra bit of time. It's just making your priorities match it, right? Exactly. And also in our culture today, I know myself, I think we're actually over 
overstimulated with communication, right? right? We're on Facebook, we're texting, we're actually doing a lot, we think, communicating, but are we actually listening with all of that going on? And I think that is the issue. I think one of the main issues in our society is loneliness. And loneliness comes not from not having an opportunity to express oneself, but in, have an opportunity to be heard. If, if, you, if you say something and you really sense I've heard you, then you will feel that you're not alone in this because you've been able to share who you are and share something about your story and feel that someone else understands and walks with you. And obviously in relationships, either in a marriage relationship, in relationships with your friends, that listening is a huge asset Absolutely. to make those work. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And I guess the other thing is too, it helps us realize when we uh, share with people and listen to them, it helps them understand that that is what God is like. God is always available for us. He's always with us. And we sometimes forget that. And sometimes we need people with skin on to show us His presence. And then they're open, they're open then to know that He's with them as well. For you, Eleanor, in your own life, you alluded to it a little bit earlier, just about knowing that God is there and God mm -hmm. is listening. Tell us just briefly about that. Yeah, I guess uh, when I was uh, in my early 20s was when I actually discovered that God loved me unconditionally. And that changed everything about my life because that gave me uh, the assurance of His presence with me. And it's always been... And then I began, I guess, to develop a, a fairly um, strong prayer life. And that nourishes and nurtures that awareness of His presence every day. And uh, that's uh, kind of what keeps me going. And that two-way communication can happen with God and people here that's on Earth. That's what I talk about. When I talk about listening, I say that the listening is happening on two levels all the time. We are listening to another person. At the same time, we are listening to the Holy Spirit who speaks in us and through us to other people. So it's always that, that we who belong to the Lord have the advantage of having Him walk with us and help us to be able to listen. Thank you, Eleanor, for helping me <laughs> learn to just slow down, take the time, and not just listening, but that we're actually hearing people and hearing what is really going on in their lives. Thanks so much. Thank you.